Okay, this is uh, Andrew Collins here. Uh, I just want to uh, tell you about this quite extraordinary discovery of this massive human skull in China uh, that was announced today in the Guardian newspaper. Um, and what its implications are, because this is a big one, basically. Um, now, they're calling it the Dragon Man. And the reason why they're calling it that is because the Chinese that have done the study on this have uh, come out and said that this is a new species altogether, something that uh, their Western paleoanthropology uh, counterparts in uh, places like Britain and America uh, don't necessarily agree with, and I'll tell you for why in a moment. Um, but basically, it was discovered uh, in 1933. Here it is on the screen now. Uh, and it was actually discovered in uh, a place called Harbin uh, on the Song Hea River. I'm going to mispronounce that, so please excuse me, in the extreme northern province of the country of China. Um, the province is called Heilongjiang. Heel, Heel okay, now the L O N G actually refers to dragon, so that could actually be a reference to what's going on in this area, and we'll have to look into that. But the story goes that in 1933, uh, as you can see here, uh, Chinese laborers building a bridge over the Songhua River. Uh, in Harbin, uh, came across this skull and to save it from falling into the hands of the Japanese who were invading uh, China at the time, that it was wrapped and hidden in an abandoned well uh, where it remained until 2012. And the guy that had found it revealed at this time to his grandson that it was only shortly died afterwards. And this has been investigated by an international team led by uh, Professor Huang Zhi uh, at the, the Hebei Geo University in China. And it's been found to be 146,000 years old. It's got a, a unique combination of primitive and more modern features. Uh, with the face in particular uh, more closely resembling Homo sapiens, and it's still got one huge uh, molar uh, still in it. Uh, the skull, which is 23 centimetres long and more than 15 centimetres wide, is substantially larger than a modern human's, and ample room uh, at 1420 uh, millilitres for the modern human brain. So, in other words, it has the capacity of being as intelligent as you know, we are today, uh, which is not the case with, let's say, the, um, the, the, the Neanderthals who were roaming uh, the Eurasian continent at the time. It's got a thick brow ridge, face has large square eye sockets, um, but delicate despite size. According to Chris Stringer, he's of the Natural History Museum of London. This guy had a huge head, basically. Now, the researchers believe that the skull belonged to a male, about 50 years of old age, who would have been an impressive physical specimen. Uh, his wide, bulbous nose allowed him to breathe huge volumes of air, indicating a high energy lifestyle, while sheer size would have helped him withstand the brutally cold winters in the region. This is another really important point that we'll come back to. Um, Homo Longi is heavily built, very robust, said Professor Zhizhong Ni, a paleontologist at Hebei. It is hard to estimate the height, but the massive head should match a height higher than the average of modern humans. Okay. Um, now it says here, to work out where the Harbin individual fitted into human history, the scientists fed 
measurements from the fossil and 95 other skulls into software that compiled the most likely family tree. To their surprise, the Harbin skull and a handful of others from China formed a new branch closer to modern humans than Neanderthals. Um, the Chinese researchers believe the Harbin skull is distinct enough to make it a new species, but Stringer is not convinced. He believes it is similar to another found in Dali County in China in 1978. Uh, I prefer to call it Homo daliensis, but it's not a big deal, he said. Uh, the important thing is the third lineage of later humans that are separate from Neanderthals and separate from human sapiens. Details are published in three papers uh, in the Innovation, Innovation magazine, which I'll have to try and get hold of. Whatever the name, one possibility is that the Harbin skull is Denisovan, a mysterious group of extinct humans known largely from DNA. Both fragments recovered from Siberia and also from a cave at Jiangxi in the Tibetan Plateau, which is in northwest China. Um, and uh, Chris Stringer says what we need is much more complete skeletal material of the Denisovans alongside DNA. So these people are still being cautious. And I, th I think the important thing here is that. What the Chinese are doing is trying to not say that this is Denisovan, um, because all the indications are that it's Denisovan. The area that it's found, which is not that far away from Siberia, not that far away from Tibetan Plateau, not that far away from Mongolia, where archaeologists believe that we first encountered the Denisovans as far back as 45,000 years ago. And we know that the Denisovans had huge teeth. They had very thick skulls. Jawbone of the, the, the Zahi individual from the Tibetan Plateau, that's very large. That jawbone matches another one known as the Pengu uh, skull that was found off the coast of Taiwan uh, back in the 2000s and is also thought to be Denisovan. So, and the fact is that from the very first moment that we knew about Denisovans in, well, I knew about them in, what, 2011, 2012, we realised that there was a good chance that these were the giants of legend and that they would found to be of extreme size. And working with my colleagues like uh, Debbie Cartwright, Richard Wald, Greg Little, you know, we supported this idea all the way along. Uh, I mean, it was first mentioned in book form in the Path of Souls, which is authored by Greg Little, um, of which I contributed sections all about the Denisovans uh, and their connection with the Giants of America. And subsequent books of mine, like um, The Cygnus Key in 2018, and the Denisovan origins in 2019 all followed this same thing that said that the Denisovans would be particularly large in size. When finally, we find this type of evidence. And here it is. So why have the Chinese not called this Denisovan? The answer is that it's nationalistic. Very clearly, the Denisovans come from the Denisovak cave in Siberia, which is in Russia. And they want this to be a brand new Chinese discovery. Uh, so they've got to look at it as something unique. I think that as time goes on, we will discover that this definitely is the Denisovan. It will be confirmed and it will be connected with all these other discoveries. Those are the Denisovan cave. Those are the, the Zahi um, uh, jawbone found on the back plateau, the Pengu skull, and other examples that have been located in China. And I mean, what I find interesting is that the name that they've used for this new species that we've got here is, is the Dragon Man, basically. Um, and what's so weird is that in Chinese myth, you have these stories of these 
giant figures known as the dragon kings who we've looked at. I mean, I know that they're only in mythology and thought there's a possibility that these could be the memory of the Denisovans in China. So whether this is by chance or design, I think that they're on the right course here. Um, beyond that, what have we got? Well, the fact is that on the Tibetan plateau, some of the oldest ancient texts tell us that before modern humans occupied the region, which if this is real history, we know that happened probably about 35 to 40,000 years ago, that the Tibetan plateau was occupied by the, 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 the beings known as the Surin and the Budug. Now, I know these are weird names, but they mean the giants and the ogres, and that they formed themselves into dynasties that ruled the lands uh, and that were encountered by our earliest ancestors when we entered into the Tibetan Plateau. Obviously, in the area of Siberia, there are accounts of giants, giants who lived in the land, invented the first irrigation, the first bridges, the first musical instruments. They were the ancestors of the first humans in the region. Um, and I think you're going to find that, that you have very similar traditions everywhere that the Denisovans were and that they are remembered because of their particularly large size. Uh, Tom Hyam in his book, um, The World Before Us, that came out earlier this year, goes into great detail about the Denisovans, all the discoveries, the DNA and the finds. He came to the conclusion that they may have been the hobbits of um, the island of Flores in Indonesia and that they were, you know, tiny little guys, Homo floriensis. And this just didn't make any sense to me because all the indications are that the Denisovans were particularly huge. And here's the evidence, this, this is it. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I think that we have what we, what we want here. Um, unfortunately, as I said, the Chinese decided to uh, make it a, a new spirit uh, species. So that's obviously going to delay the connections with Denisovans, but I would put money on the fact that, that um, Dragon Man, as they're calling it, here's the picture here of Dragon Man, of what they think he looks like, uh, which may or may not be the case. All of these reconstructions are biased in one way or another. Is that's it really. Now, what's the link with the Neanderthals? Well, the Neanderthals were certainly in Western Eurasia. They were certainly in Central um, Eurasia. They probably were in China and they are related to the Denisovans, they, the, both of them were, were the, off the same branch of the same tree. They broke away from a common ancestor with us, you know, Homo sapiens, at a very early date, possibly 700, 800,000 years ago. Um, and so, you know, the fact that the Chinese uh, have said, you yeah, know, this is a new species, another side branch of the Neanderthals, I mean, that's not wrong, but they're ignoring the connection with the Denisovans. Now, what I want to do is look at, at Harbin, where this uh, discovery was made, and see if I can make links. I'm going to look at the mountains. I'm going to have a look at the mythology of the area. And if I find something of interest, I will come back to you. But for the moment, this is a huge discovery. And I thought that it warranted doing a special video, which is what I've done here, and I hope that this could be the first of many. So if you like what you're hearing and seeing now, then please subscribe and please like this video, and I shall see you again soon.